Okay, this will be our seventh study on the Tenth Commandment. And we're looking at the Fifth Commandment. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. Written to the Jewish people, that thy days may be long upon the land, Jewish, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Jewish. There's only one group of people throughout history that has ever given a piece of land, a nation. And that nation is Israel. As you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5, Deuteronomy chapter 5, the law, we are reading the law written by Moses to the Jewish people. Chapter 5, verse 16, Deuteronomy. And the Israelites were given a promise of land. And they were given a promise of longevity. And one of those longevities would be honoring their parents. Another one would be keeping the laws, the commandments, the judgments, and everything that God has written. And in the judgments and the laws that we just read, the commandments, one of the commandments is to honor the parents. That's important because Paul's going to say something later, but Deuteronomy 5, 16, honor thy father and thy mother, both of them, not one, not one the other. As the Lord thy God has commanded thee, Exodus, that thy days may be prolonged, that it may be well with thee. You won't do well? Honor your parents. In the land, God, which the Lord thy God has given thee, Israel. So you want to do well? Honor your parents. And you can't nitpick and choose, oh, you know, I don't like my dad, or my mom, or I don't like my mom, I'm going to dishonor my dad, or I don't like both of them. There's no loopholes in this law. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Well, you know, we're, un we're not under a law. We're under grace. And I'm in Galatians. Don't worry about the point. Ephesians, amazing. Well, how one book will change everything. Ephesians 6, 1. You ready? All writing to the Christians in Ephesus. Children. Are we not the children of God? So this is written to a child that has parents. And this is written to children who are of God. Obey your parents in the Lord. Oh, Paul added. Strike it out. Paul has added. Thou shalt not add to the word of God. Thou shalt not subtract to the word. Paul has added in the Lord. Oh, I just love Jesus. I just, I just, you know, Jesus, how are you doing with your parents? Well, you know, my dad was. No. Absolutely not. Honor children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Well, my dad, you know, he makes me mow the lawn. He may. What's he say? You don't like the job? Go out there and do. I'm going to do. I'm going to do the dishes before the Lord. I don't like doing it, God, but I'm going to do it for you. I don't like bringing up the garbage, but Lord, I'll do it for you. Help me to do it with the peace of mind, joy, and, and a loving heart to my mom and dad. It's pretty much Christians, children. Your parents, if they're saved, go to church, love the Lord. Even if they're Sunday morning only. They're not going to be basically going to have you do anything that defiles the scripture. Pretty much. Most parents, 90%, I'm, I'm going to throw out there. That may be a relatively low number, but 90% of the parents out there lost are not going to have their children do something that would be cruel and harmful and illegal. Lost. Never mind saved parents. Verse 2. Honor thy father and mother. Oh boy. Which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well, there's that well of Deuteronomy, 
with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. All right, so what's the first commandment promise? God said, if you honor your mother and father, Israel, Jewish, Hebrew, I will let you live longer in the land that I've given you. That's the promise. I mean, it's not eat vitamins, exercise every day, eat a good breakfast, have a good meal, don't, don't have snacks and stuff like that. It's, Lord, I want to live longer, okay? Lord, I want to live in your land, okay? What do you want me to do, Lord? I want you to honor your parents. I want you to respect them. Now, verse 1, children obey your parents. All right, obey your parents. You know when that ends? That's the children out there. <laughs> He's going to say it never ends. It does end. When you move out of your parents' house, and you are self-supporting, and you are self-governing yourself in your own place, in your own family. Now, your mother and father, your grandparents may come to you and give you advice. And you may not listen. And your parents and your grandparents may give you excellent advice to do what needs to be done. And if you're not living in their house, and you have your own life, your own money, your own furnitures, your own food. Okay? You can disobey them. Now, there may be consequences. But don't, okay, I'm living on my own and your parents are helping you. I'm going to college, I'm in a dorm, but dad and mom sends me money to survive. And they tell me to do this, I'm not going to do it. You're in violation of the scriptures. Because you may be living outside your parents' home, but if they're supporting you with their money, you are still under the obligation. Now children, honor thy father and mother. When does that end? It never ends. Honoring doesn't mean, listen, you, after you're on your own, you can say, Dad, great advice, but I'm going to be stupid, and I'm going to live my, I'll make my own mistakes. Sorry, Dad. Okay? And you're going outside to obey your parents when you're on your own. But honor your parents. That's a lifetime. At no time are you ever to disrespect your parents, your mother or father. Well, my father wasn't around. My father wasn't around all the time. My father, the livelihood that he had growing up has given me bad, not terrible, bad memories of growing up. But he's still my dad. I still want him to be saved. And I still want his name in the Lance Book of Life, which it's not today. But you don't know. I don't know. But God knows. And God said, honor your parents, mother and father. When I say parents, I mean mother and father and father and mother. Well, one of my parents beat me. Honor. Where is the loophole? There is no loophole. Are we not to love our enemies? Are we not to love them that persecute us? Oh, we can quote those scriptures, but when we apply it to the application of our life. I didn't know who my father was. I didn't know who my mother was. I've been adopted. All right, you have adopted parents. You're going to honor them, but you also have parents that gave birth to you. And there may be a likelihood that the adoption was the best thing they could do for you. Or maybe it could have been the worst thing. But is that not still? They're your parents. Adopted or not. Gave you up or not. Didn't do you well. Are they not your father and mother? Do you want to live longer? You know, I, I, I see advertisements and stuff like that. These, these television programs, oh, you can live longer if you take our vitamins. You can take longer if you do our exercise. I've never heard a program you can live longer if you obey God in the Bible. And notice he doesn't say land in Ephesians. That land is Israel. He said that it may be well, Deuteronomy, with thou mayest live long on the earth, not land. A Christian can live longer on the earth on his conduct and his activities to his parents. Saved or lost. It's that simple. You're not to badmouth them, you're not to disrespect them. Colossians 3.20. Now we Colossians 3.20.
Colossians 3.20. Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. You want to please God, children, child? You do what your parents tell you to do. I can't. That, that's not an excuse. I don't want to. That's not an excuse. All things. You don't know what my parents... I, I said already, they're not going to have you do anything in most cases, most cases, that is going to harm you. And if you are a Christian, if you're in a Christian home, maybe you're not saved, and you want to obey the Lord, you can't obey the Lord if you're not obeying your parents. Again, that ends when you move out of their house. I'm 25 years old. I live under my father's house. I make a living. I pay him rent. I guarantee you don't pay as much rent. It would be what it costs for you to be there. Now, if you live under your father's roof and you pay a full rent and you buy your own groceries and you pay for your own utilities and okay, then respectfully, you're not under your father's care. But when your parents are supporting you and financially taking care of you, your payment that pleases God is, okay, I will do it, and I will do it respectfully, and it cannot be told 400 times and remind you 300 times. How many times I've got to tell you, a parent shouldn't have to say that. You cannot say you obey God. I go out and I preach the gospel. How do you, how do, you do with, with listening to your parents? Well, then you're at fault. You have sinned against God. You need to confess your sins to be washed and cleaned your, of, of your sins. And you need to get right with your parents. Second John 4. Second John 4. Second John 4. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received commandment of the Father. All right. You know what rejoices your parents, child? What can I do to make my mom happy? What can I do to make my father happy? When you walk in truth. When your mother and your father, and maybe I'm including grandparents too. When they are praying for you to get saved. They are praying for you to get right. They are praying for you to repent. I just love my mama. Are you saved? Well, no. Is she praying for you? Uh, uh, yeah, she's praying for me. Then you don't love your mama. I respect my dad. Is your dad on his knees for you? Well, yeah. Are you doing the will of God according to the scriptures? Well, no. Then you don't respect your dad. If you can't respect your father on the planet Earth, how can you respect your Holy Father in Heaven? When I'm going to obey God the Father in Heaven, but I'm not going to obey my earthly dad or father. You've sinned. And your mother and father rejoice when you are walking in the truth. And what is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you don't have to be perfect. God doesn't expect you to be perfect. When you are living your life to the fullest that God's given you to the fullest, what God wants you to do, that ought to make your Christian parents happy. Well, my parents are unsaved. My parents are worldly Christians. It makes your Heavenly Father happy. My dad is unsaved. And I don't know what reality he has of me preaching and teaching the Word of God, but he honors that. He likes that. 
He has gone to his, his unsaved friends and say, you know, my son preaches in, in, in church. My son preaches on a street. My son, and he's had pictures of my children holding gospel signs. He has read the gospel tracts I've given him. Now, he won't come to Christ yet. But I'm doing the will of the God in my life, and that pleases to a point my unsaved dad. My mom looks at me, you know, there's some misunderstanding with my family, but that's the teachings they're getting, but she's not against what I'm doing with the Bible. And she's saved. Parents of Christians who are Christian would overjoy to hear that you, as their child, son or daughter, are walking in the truth. 3 John 1 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. There it is twice in two different books. I know sin is sin. I know there's no degrees of sin, but my son committed a horrible act of sin. And he's in jail for it. He's gotten right. He's repented. He's trying to serve the Lord. He's trying to do right. I know he's battling his sins. And I am pleased that he is walking in truth. And I will give him a chastising when he falls into decay. Because he's asking me. My son is old. 20 something. Sorry I don't know. I think he was born in 1997. My son still comes to me. and says, Dad, what should I do? Dad, what's the Bible say? And then I will give him what the Bible says. And pretty much I believe he follows. And he takes the chastising. He doesn't have to. But it's a pleasure to hear that he's trying to do right. And it's a pleasure for him to ask me what the Bible says. To help correct his life. It pleases me that he wants to do right. Though he's done wickedly wrong. And if God forgives and forgets. I must forgive. And forget. That simple. Hebrews 12. 5. Hebrews 12. 5. I got a little more light on this one. I to get old and dim. Hebrews 12, 5. And have you forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children? My son, despise not the chasing of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Um, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scorneth every son whom he receiveth. And if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chaseth not? But if you are without chastisement, whereof all, whereof all ye are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we had fathers of our flesh, earthly fathers, which corrected us, and he gave unto and we gave them reverence. See the reverence? That's honor. That's not happening today in the world. Fathers are not chastising. Fathers are not correcting. Parents are not chastisement. Parents are not correcting the children. And the children are not giving reverence. That's why we are in the miserable state of childhood that we are in today. And God the Father chastises His Son. And our earthly fathers are to chastise us. And that means that you will get a red butt. You will get a sore hiney when you have been wrong, when you have sinned, and you have to deal with your father. God does it. He doesn't give you a red hiney, but he gives you correction. 
That don't mean for the father or the mother to hit you across the face. That doesn't mean to give you wounds on your back or, you know, the Bible says a rod. It doesn't say belt. It doesn't say clothes hanger. It doesn't say take a meal away. It doesn't say time out. It says a rod upon the fleshy flesh of your rear end. That's why it's called child rearing. And you are to respect your parents when you get that child rearing. And I have failed God and my parents because I've sat in my room after my child rearing. Oh, oh I wish my parents would die. Oh, they don't love me. No, oh, oh, I want to move. I want to run away. That's not respecting your parents. And I did that. And I've sinned. It's under the blood. If I, I wish my parents would die. I wish my parents would go. I wish I had other parents. That is not honoring. That's not uh, reverencing. There are people who reverend a minister, but they won't reverend their mother or father. That's a sin. You know who else gets reverend in the Bible? Not a minister. God is to be reverend. And if God's to be reverend, and your parents to be reverend, there's a little state there that God puts your parents on that pedestal. Because the Bible says, as far as marriage, there's God the Father, there's Jesus Christ, there's the husband, there's the wife, and there's the children. Now let me put it for you children. There's God the Father, there's Jesus Christ, there's your father, there's your mother, and there you are. And you cannot say you love God if you don't adhere to your parents. It's not checkers. You don't jump over the piece and get to the next checker. Look at the word reverence. Look at the word reverend in the Bible and you find it's to God too. Now, I am not to say after you got a whipping, and you, oh, you go, oh, Dad, I thank you very much. I'll tell you how you tell Dad thank you very much. The next time he tells you to do it, you do it. And when he tells you not to do it, don't do it. That's how you say thank you. And then you look to God and say, God, you know, it hurts. I, I'm very sore. I, I, I'm kind of mad. I don't want to sin. And thank you for giving me parents that love me. In this unloving moment of being chastised. Listen, it's no pleasure. My mom chastised me. It was not a pleasure. But man, my mom's chastisement got me out of a lot of sins and kept me out of jail. My mom's chastisement of me, thank God for a godly mother that is now saved. Man, she built up and charged my conscience to the full maximum that my conscience kept me out of trouble. Thank you, mom. Thank you, God. You say, well, you didn't thank your dad. My dad didn't correct me. I still honor him as my dad. I feared my dad. You know, my dad never ever laid a hand on me. But man, I, I, I that, old, uh, that one moment, <laughs> I always feared that one moment if he ever did. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad, for being to the point is if I ever did break, I would fear what you've done to me. I'm not saying he would have killed me or anything like that. My dad loved me. My mom loved me. And I've done my mom harm. If my mom's got any gray hairs today, I am saying disrespectfully, I probably caused them. Are you perfect? Are you Mr. Wonderful? Are you the greatest? How'd you treat your parents? From the day that you were born to present or their death. Did you let your mother sleep when you're three months old when she needed sleep? Or did you why and wet your pants and make her take care of you when she was tired? How you doing? We've all sinned. All have sinned. Especially in the frame of honoring your father and your mother. No one's innocent when it comes to this. Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21. We have sinned against God 
We have sinned against our parents. You ought to be listening to this. You ought to be getting right. And I skip. We'll go back to that in the morning. So, uh, we're going to Deuteronomy 21. I missed the place. About it. Deuteronomy 21, 18. How about this? Deuteronomy 21, 18. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son, America, America, England, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother. Look at that, both of them. If your father says no, don't you dare go to your mom who will tell you yes. And mothers, if you do exactly opposite of what your husband, as the father of that child, if you do opposite what that father did to that child, you've sinned against God too. If the father says no, you say no. If the father says yes, you say yes. You hear me? I heard one time one, a, a mother tell their child, well, you know, I know how to take care of your father. You sinned against God. You know what other parent did that? The, the mother of the daughter that said, get me John the Baptist's head on a platter. Ooh, you didn't know I was going to do that. The voice of his father and the voice of his mother. And that when they have chastened him. Oh, there's the chastening again. They have tried to correct that child. They have warmed his hiney. Will not hearken to them. Then shall the father and his mother lay hold on him. And bring him out to the elders of the city and unto the gates of the place. <coughs> Notice. The father and the mother had applied chastisement. You say, should the, should, the, uh, should the mother punish the child? That's what the Bible says. And they shall say unto the elders of the city. This, our son, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. Oh, that's American teen today. What do we do with teen pregnancy? What do we do with underage drinking? And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones. Now, America today, they get stoned with marijuana and drugs. This is not that stoning. This is where they apply capital punishment to the disobedient child. That he die. So thou shalt put away evil, put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. You know what the fear is? The children hear that Tommy has been killed because Tommy wouldn't obey his parents. Jimmy will say, I better obey my mom and dad because I don't want that to happen to me. Don't tell me capital punishment does not deter crime because the person who has been applicant of capital punishment will never commit a crime again. And it's supposed to take other people who witness the capital punishment and hear about the capital punishment and say, I better not do it. When you got brothers and sisters in your house and you get beaten for something, your brothers and sisters say, I better not do that. <laughs> Look what dad did. Look what mom did. It's supposed to deter crime. You know what the Bible says in the time of Israel? When a child would not listen to his old parents? Remember, remember we said, you shall live long in the, in the land that God's given to Jewish people? When you were stoned for disobeying your parents, you did not live long. You know what happened if you didn't disobey your parents? You were put to death. That's not living long. That's not living long. 1 Peter 1.14. Go back over here. 1 Peter 1.14. I accidentally skipped this. Maybe the Lord wanted to. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust. In your ignorance. That's us. That's us as children of God. Obedient. We're to be obedient to God the Father. 
And we're to be obedient to mom and dad. And a lot of times when we lived, when we moved out, we're on our own. Mom and dad may be trying to help us for the good. All right, look at it. You are a man. You you moved out of your house. You just got married. You just started. You got a career. You got a place. You know. You just got married, and you're gonna buy a fancy Corvette. Uh, you know, sports car and all that. And dad's like, no, I don't think you should get a Corvette, son. I think you should get a car that's going to have a little more seats than two. Because dad knows that you and Honey Pie are going to be a little active and that there will be others coming along, maybe. And there's no room to put a baby seat in a Corvette. And a Corvette is not going to be carrying enough groceries and stuff you're going to need as your family grows. See, Dad's trying to help you. Mom and Dad may give you advice on eating and spending money or whatever, and you're on your own. It would be wise to listen to them because they made the mistakes. To come to you and say, hey, don't make this mistake, child. And you're not under their authority, you're on your but it would be well pleasing to God if you listen to your parents' advice and say, okay. And maybe you can tweak it a little to your own living. Now, if your father comes to you and says, you know, son, I think you need to go out to a bar and get some drinks and, and just get away from your family. That's advice you don't follow. And one of your parents come, well, you know, I just think you need a psychiatrist. That's you don't follow that. I mean, if, if one of your parents say, go to the psychiatrist, say, okay, go to the Bible, go to God, and go to your pastor, say, you know, I've been advised to go to a psychiatrist, but, you know, I want the word of God, I want to do right by God, pastor, help me. See? See, not all your parents are going to give you bad advice. Now, they may. Your parents may tell you, get out of that church, get out of the church, stop serving the Lord. My family's told me that many times. I mean, my general family. Not my parents, but sometimes you can't listen. Many times you can. All right. Proverbs, uh, let's look at Luke 15, 11 while we're here. Luke 15, 11. Luke 15, 11. I'm in John. Why am I not in the right books today? Luke 15, 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of food that falls to me. And he divided unto him his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey to the far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And we spent all of their rows of mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, and he sent unto him in the fields to feed swine. He would fain to fill his belly with the husk, that the swine did eat, and no man gave them to him. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish for hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to call thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He said, Why did you read that? You need to go back and repent to your parents. You're saved now? You're under the blood of Jesus Christ, are you? Your parents may be saved or they may be lost. And I am speaking of, I have done this to both my parents. You need to go back and say, I'm sorry for what a rascal character I was. I am so sorry I mistreated you. I am so sorry I did not respect you. I am so sorry for things you don't know and things that you do know. Because they know a lot more than what you think you, they know. I stole money from my father. I sat down and wrote him a letter and told him, if I could, you tell me how much I owe you and I will pay it back some way, somehow. My father said, you're forgiven. How are you doing? I love the Lord. I go out. I witness. I go to church three times a week. I go when the doors are open. There I am. I'm in the prayer meeting. I'm doing it. Have you gotten right with your parents? No. You need to. 
How can you be right with God the Father if you're not right with your Father on earth? Now, maybe your parents have died. Maybe your parents have shunned you. Now, if your parents have died, you can't do nothing. You, you just got to repent and get it right with the Lord. Say, Lord, wherever my parents are, they're saved the law. Uh, just right now, Lord God, this is the only way I can do it. Uh, they're dying. I can't speak to them. Lord, I have sinned against them. And some way, I am sorry to them what I've done. And Father, I'm sorry to you what I've done against my parents because only you have I sinned against. And your parents won't talk to you. They won't have anything to do with you. Whatever matters. You need to write a letter. Send it to them. And if they don't want to get right, they don't. that's their problem. But you've got to make it right. And if you get the letter back, say return to sender. Uh, no, Then you got to put it. Don't put the return address on the envelope. Just send it to them. And not putting on the envelope who it is. And if you don't know who your parents are, you've got to get down on your knees and say, God, the Father, I don't know who they are. I don't know where they are. I don't know what their condition. I've been mad at them. Lord God, forgive me for being mad at them. If you would somehow give to them that, uh, 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 I forgive them. That's honoring your father and mother. 1 Corinthians 7.39 1 Corinthians 7.39 A wife is bound to law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. I don't know why I wrote that one down. Well, that's that. Proverbs 1.8 Proverbs 1.8 Somebody needed that. I wrote it. There it is. That's a 7. That's a 39 with my bad writing. I never know what the Lord wants. Somebody may say, that was just for me. Amen. You know, if you're a saved person, let me say, and your spouse has died and you're a Christian, I'm going to get married. Go ahead. You're allowed to. Only marry another Christian. All right. Proverbs 1. I guess that was a little side note. Proverbs 1.8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. How's that? Obey your parents. There it is. Verse 10. Same chapter. Verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Come on, Jimmy. Let's go out and get some beers tonight. Mom and dad told me drink is not right and that stuff is just wrong. It's against God. No, I'm sorry. I'm not going. And don't say, my mom and dad told me not to go. In the name of Jesus, in the Lord, didn't we see in uh, Ephesians 6, obey the Lord, in the Lord. Say, you know, Lord, it is. My parents said it's not right, so it's got to be not right. So, Lord, no, I'm not going because it's wrong. Sorry. Did we not read in, in 2 John? Did we not read in 3 John that your parents, hey, you know, my son don't drink. My son doesn't corral. Uh, he's walking the truth. But parent hearing your son's going to bars and fooling around with women you shouldn't fool around. That don't please your parents if they're saved. Verse 15. My son, walk not thou in the way of with them. Corrupt people. Refrain thy foot from their path. Don't follow evil. Don't go after sinners. Don't do that. It's wrong. This is a father speaking to his child. And this is a child listening to his father, sort of, Rehoboam, did not obey his father. And destroyed the kingdom into two. Rehoboam, the son of, of Solomon, split north and south Israel. He did not listen to his father's advice. Don't split your family. Don't split your church. Don't split anything because you will not listen to the counsel of God and the counsel of your parents. 2-1. Proverbs. All these are going to be in Proverbs. 2-1. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, listen 
to what now you may have to wait, wait some stuff bad stuff out but generally a saved parent will have some good advice 3 1 my son forget not my law but let thy heart keep my commandment now the law he's speaking about is not god's law oh we're on, we're not under law we're under grace this is the law it's eight o'clock bedtime you will call us when you get where you're going. You will call us when you leave. You cannot go there. You cannot do that. You must ask for permission. You must eat all that's on your plate. You must be quiet. You must have this rule. You can't do this. You can't do that. Those are the laws of your parents, and you are to obey those laws. Or face chastisement. That's what the Bible says. 311. My son despise not chasing the Lord. And we read that already in Hebrew. If you break the law in your house, you will probably get chastisement. And you better not hate, talk back, or disrespect your parents. They are doing exactly what God told them to do. According to the scriptures. Plain and simple. 3.12 For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father the son in whom he delighted. Listen. You get corrected, they love you. They let you go out and, and do whatever you want to do, there's no love. What the Bible says. 21. 3.21 3.21 My son, let not them depart from thy eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. And he's talking about knowledge. In verse 20. He's talking about wisdom. Verse 19. He's talking about the created acts of God. 19 and 20. Don't forget God created you, not monkey man. You are a product of God. Not Darwinism. God made you. God made me your parent. And God says, obey your parents. Son. Son. 4.10 Hear, O my son, receive my sayings. The years of thy life shall be many. Is that not backing what we read in Exodus 20.12 and Ephesians 6, 1 and 2? If you listen to your parents, you're going to probably live longer. Do not take candy from strangers. Do not go off with a stranger. If a stranger comes up to you, scream and holler. If you're going to be raped, my daughter, don't yell rape, yell fire. Well, wait, why? Because more people will come to a fire than they will come to a rape. See, your parents know something that you don't. Don't carry a large amount of money in your pocket. Those little tidbits that your parents tell you are for your good and probably your parents learned the hard way. It's that simple. That was 410, 420. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. Now this is not the Bible. This is the words of a father. Listen, just because you get out of school doesn't mean, oh, you're not going to be under teachers no more. You're not going to you're going to have the police as an authority. You're going to have a boss as an authority. You're going to have a marriage partner under authority. When you move out of your parents' house, you're not out of authority. There will be someone there always over you with rules. Start obeying and learning them now. And there'll be many rules and laws that you do not like, but tough cookies. Move on. 5-1. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thy ear to my understanding. Your parents have a lot more knowledge, not more wisdom, and a lot more understanding than you have because they lived a whole lot longer. And let me tell you something, children. 
Your parents have learned a lot more since you've been in their life. Children will give adults a lot more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of life. Plain and simple. 520. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? The Bible teach one man, one woman. Schools teach one man and one man. Schools teach one woman, one woman. Hollywood teaches sleep around with anybody and everybody. You know what dad says? You find yourself a good wife. You find yourself a good husband. You know why? Because your husband, I mean, your, your father does not want you to get diseases. Your father wants you to be happy like. Your father wants to look out best for you. He doesn't want you to have a miserable life. And a miserable life is when you go sleep around with different women. Or if you're a daughter, you go sleep around with different men. That's miserable. Because you may have children, you don't even know who the father is. You don't even know what kind of life you're going to get when you sleep around. And by the way, sleeping around is adultery and fornication. So how's that? 7-1. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. I'm going to put the TV back on. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. And that commandment is not God's commandments. That is a father writing to his son. That's what the book of Proverbs is. Proverbs is Solomon writing to his son. Son, I'm going to put it all writing for you. What's a commandment? You see your mother over there? Yeah, you better treat her right. When she puts dinner on the play table, you better be there and you better eat it all. What she says to do, you do it. What I tell you to do, you do it. I tell you look both ways before you cross that road, you better look both ways. I tell you to change that shirt, you change that shirt. No question. That's what it's about. 10-1. 10-1. The Bible has much to say about this. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father. Is that what we read in 2 John, 3 John? But watch this. But a foolish son is heavily, heaviness of his mother. Is your mother miserable because of you, child? I know mothers out there who are miserable because of their children. You have sinned against God. Lost or saved. And I know a man right now. And he talks about his child over. In, uh, being a missionary. And he just lifts up that child. Glory to God. He's doing right. 2 John. 3 John. Proverbs 10.1 I know saved mothers. Oh that child of mine. Proverbs 10.1 you make your mother ashamed. And it's a sin. It's a sin against God. You are not obeying the commandment, honor thy mother and father, if your mother has heaviness because of you, you little brat. Don't call me brat. I'll call you whatever I want to call you. Verse 5. He that gathereth in the summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in the harvest is a son that causeth shame. Get a job. People say, well, Stella, you're not working. I have a disability. And I am looking for work that matches my disability. Okay? There are tons of children out there who are not making a living. And making other children. And making their life miserable. Ten five. Thirteen one. 13.1 Pray for me. A wise son hears his father's instruction. How's that? You know, you always don't have to say, my father told me, my mother. Just do it. Do it right. And thank God for giving you good parents. 
Listen, I said my father's unsaved, and there are things my father taught me. There are things my dad taught me. I thank God what he taught me. So with all the things, he worked a steady job. And he brought money home. Other things in my father's life, I can't take. But the good thing. There's been advice my dad's told me I can't take. And there's advice I do take. The same with my mom. They're trying to help you. Verse 24, same chapter. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chaseth him between time. You know, that means early and often. You can't say your parents love you if they don't chastise you. That's what the Bible says. When you've seen that screaming brat in the, in the store and his mother gives in and, get, and buy or his father gives whatever to shut the brat up. That's not a parent that loves their child. Now the one says, no, if you don't knock it off, we're going to go home right now. We're going to deal with it. And you're still not going to get it. And the child finally obeys. That's a parent that loves their child. According to the scriptures. Uh, 1520, I believe. 1520. Notice what we're reading now the Bible, and I'm making as few as comments as possible. I'm letting the Bible talk. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. If you do not honor your parents, the Bible says you're a fool. You know another foolish man in the Bible? A man that says in his heart that there's no God. The fool has said in his heart that there's no God. A fool is a man that, I don't care about my mother, I don't care about my dad. But the wise son, he has a happy father. A foolish son, his mother is forsaken and forgotten and not cared about. I, I, my mom's called by my daughter frequently. I let them two talk. They love to talk. My mom's always in my prayers. You don't care about your mother. You don't have anything to do with your mother. You're a fool. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Tack that verse on the front door. On both sides of your door when you come in and out of your place. You're a fool. That was 15, 20, 17, 2. 17, 2. Oh, we got much. Time's already gone by. 17, 2. A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame. You know, your father, if he's got a business, may make an employee more valuable than his son what it says I have better employees than I do I have better co-workers than my son that's not good that's not good at all 25 a foolish son is grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him there's that fool again you are a shame to your parents and you are a fool that is not second John that is not third John at all. I don't care what you say. I don't care the circumstance. What did the scripture say? If your parents are not pleased with you, you are a fool. You are a fool. 1913. 1913. A fool's son is calamity of his father. And the, okay, well, the next is about the wife. There's that fool again. There's that fool. You don't please your parents. Listen, even if you're saved and your parents are not saved, there are going to be some things that you do that they're going to talk about and they're going to be, hey, that's my child. Unless they're just so vile and wicked and 
Okay. But that's because you love the Lord. Marvel not if the world hates you. It's not because of you. It's because the God and Savior that you serve. Or is it because of you? Are you the one? Or is it the Lord? 1918. Chasing thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. That's Bible. Chastening. What was that? 1918. 1926. He that wastes his father and chases away his mother is a son that causes shame and bringeth reproof. He doesn't take care of his parents. Get out of here, Mom. I'm not going to help you. Oh, you're on your own? Tough, Mom. i got my own life to live. Dad, get out of my life. I don't, I don't need you. Cease, my son, to hear instructions that causes to err or err from the words of knowledge. If you're going to do something, if you're going to listen to something that's going to do you harm, going to make you sin, don't do it. Plain and simple. That was 1927. 2315. 2315. Ooh, we're going to... This thing stops. I, I, I apologize. For, we've got much scripture. 2315. My son, if thy heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice after my... If you're pleasing the Lord, I'm pleasing the Lord. We're all pleasing the Lord together. I'm pleased with you. God's pleased with you. Here's that. 23.19 Hear thou, my son, be wise and guide thy heart in the way. Jesus is the way. Here it is. 19. Verse 26. My son, give Give me thy heart and let thy eye observe my... Watch me, son. Watch me how I do. Let me be the living example. That's what Paul said. Paul says, be followers of me. How's that? 23... 26. We just read that. 24, 13. I hate it. And... My son, eat thou honey, because it's good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to our taste. Mom and dad are going to tell you foods to eat. You're not going to want to eat, but it's healthy. And they want you to be healthy. They don't want you to be sick. How's that? Oh, got that one in. 24, 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king. Son, don't pick on the Democrats. Son, don't rebuke the Republicans. Son, love and pray for all your government officials, Republican or Democrat, whoever they are, whoever what they've done, whoever they killed. Son, you respect them, and son, you obey and love the Lord and pray. How is that? How is that? I made somebody mad on that one. 2711. 2711. My son... Be wise and make my heart glad. 28.7 Whosoever keep, keepeth the law is a wise son. But he that is a companion of righteous men shameth his father. 29.17 Let's see if we can do it. 29.17 Correct thy son, he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto, thy, unto you, your soul. Excuse me. I'm in kind of a hurry here. 31, 2 through 9. Here's a mother giving advice to her son. I hope he can finish. What, my son? What? The son of my womb? What? The son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women. Don't make them do the work. Nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemonel. It is not for kings to drink wine. Son, don't do alcohol. Or for princes a strong drink. Least they drink and forget their law. And pervert the judgment of the way of the flick. Fathers, mothers, don't teach your children to drink. Children, when your parents say don't drink, don't drink. We done. That's it. Got all the scriptures I wanted to. Thank the Lord. Children, obey your parents. Children, honor your parents. That pleases the Lord. And if your parents are pleased, God is pleased. 
and you'll do well.